Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, many of us like to share Easter breakfast with our friends. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, looked forward all week to sharing hers with several of her students and some of the faculty. Some of the faculty being biology teacher Philip Boynton. Yes, Mr. Boynton is enough of the faculty for me. At least I hope he's for me. I know I'm for him. <laughs> so much for the world of sports. <laughs> Saturday afternoon found me making arrangements for the big day in my landlady's kitchen. You certainly look domestic bustling around that stove, Connie. Tell me, what was it you just plopped into that pot of boiling water? My thumb, Mrs. Davis. <laughs> oh, you mean the white thing. That was an egg. They've got to get nice and hard before we can dye them. By the way, I saw Harriet Conklin helping you with our Easter baskets before. Where did our beloved principal's daughter disappear to? I sent her to the grocery store for some more eggs and some dye. We were running short. Harriet is certainly a sweet little girl. Yes, she is. Just goes to show you how little there is to heredity. <laughs> Let's see those Easter baskets again. Hmm. Plenty of straw, jelly beans, little yellow chicks. There's just one more thing I'd like to see in each one. What's that, Connie? A chocolate bunny with a thousand-dollar bill in his mouth. <laughs> I'm afraid that's asking a little too much. All right, then. I'll settle for a wax bunny. I'm back, Mrs. Davis. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. Did you get the stuff? Yes, ma'am. Here's the dye, and I got a couple of dozen eggs. Good. Let's put some more of these in to boil. I'll do it. What's the schedule for tomorrow, Miss Brooks? When do you want us to come for breakfast? Oh, about 10 o'clock will be fine, Harriet. Then we'll all be on time for the Easter parade. I'll bet you'll look stunning, Miss Brooks. What kind of an outfit are you wearing this year? Well, in some ways, it's quite similar to the outfit I wore last Easter. How do you mean, Miss Brooks? Same hat, coat, dress, and shoes. <laughs> I did invest in something new, though. A gossard narrow line girdle. <laughs> Does it really make you look narrow, Connie? Narrow? When I stand sideways, you can't see me at all. <laughs> I like to think. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I'd better get over to the cleaners and pick up Daddy's Easter outfit. You know how meticulous he is when he appears in public. He's not only meticulous, he's impeccable. He's not only impeccable, he's impossible. <laughs> I mean, impatient. So you better run along now, Harriet. Okay, Miss Brooks. See you tomorrow. Bye, Mrs. Davis. Goodbye, dear, and thanks for the help. Now, you'll probably want to wash up after you mix that dye, Connie, so I'll get some clean towels for the pantry sink. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. Da da dum dee 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 Come on in. The door's open. It is I, Miss Brooks, your own personal Easter bunny. <laughs> At last, just drop the $1,000 bills in the basket. <laughs> oh, it's Walter Denton. Tell me that I'm in time, Miss Brooks. Tell me that you didn't dye your eggs yet. You're in time, Walter. I didn't dye my eggs yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. Miss Brooks, just before the holidays, I hit on a new dye in the chem lab at school that's absolutely sensational. A new dye? Yes, ma'am. That's why I'm so glad you didn't color your eggs yet. I want you to do it with my stuff. It's absolutely dynamite. Walter, I just want the Easter eggs to look pretty, not blow up. <laughs> Miss Brooks, where are you going to load this stuff? It'll revolutionize the egg dyeing industry. I'll make millions out of this. Billions. And you, Miss Brooks, will get my everlasting gratefulness. That's my usual cut. <laughs> I call this magic dye tint tomorrow. Tint tomorrow? Yeah, I took the two words tint and tomorrow and made a word marriage out of it. Well, I hope they'll be very happy together. <laughs> Just how does this stuff work, Walter? Well, it's a powder, Miss Brooks, but a delayed action powder. In other words, when you dye an egg with tint tomorrow, no color change takes place at all today. It doesn't? Naturally not. It changes its tint tomorrow. tomorrow. Right! You see, that's why I call, call it, it tint, tint tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> well, that was fun. What do we do now? <laughs> 
these sample eggs that I dyed yesterday, Miss Brooks. Look, red, blue, green, purple. Aren't they beautiful? They are nice, Walter. Very brilliant. Is this invention of yours easy to apply? Well, easier than that old-fashioned stuff. Uh, these two bags will dye 12 eggs each. And now, look, I've got to get downtown on an errand for my folks, so I'll just leave these four extra bags by your pantry sink on my way out. Well, I'll certainly be happy to try it, Walter. Remember, Miss Brooks, I haven't got this invention patented yet, so you mustn't breathe a word about it. In fact, I must insist on an oath of secrecy. Walter, I won't even tell the eggs. <laughs> Here are the clean towels, Connie. I'd have come back sooner, but I was on the phone with Mrs. Conklin. She's got a problem, poor dear. I know. I work for him. <laughs> oh, I don't mean Mr. Conklin. She's worried about parading in the sun tomorrow morning. She says she gets a lot of freckles that way. Oh, that's as good a way as any. What did you recommend? Some of this remarkable face cream I got at the beauty parlor last week. It's called Freckle Off. <laughs> Freckle-off. This is a big day for me. First tint tomorrow, then freckle-off. Hmm. Tint tomorrow and freckle-off. Sounds like a Polish piano team. Here. Uh, just uh, let me rub a little on your chin, dear. Oh, but Mrs. Davis, I... It'll do you a world of good. Just this one little dab. There. I was about to tell you that I don't have any freckles on my chin. <laughs> I can see that. But isn't it comforting to know that now you'll never have any? <laughs> it's a security I never dreamt of. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Davis, would you mind taking these baskets into the living room? I've still got some work to do in here. Certainly, dear. Oh, look who's coming down the driveway, Connie. It's one of your pupils, Stretch Snodgrass. Oh, you mean the brain? The brain? Why do you call him that? I keep hoping that if I just say the word often enough, he'll grow one. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen, Stretch. I'll go finish decorating the living room, Connie. All right, Mrs. Davis. Hi, Miss Brooks. Hello, Stretch. Well, the reason I come over, Miss Brooks, is I brung you something. Stretch, you brought me something. You've seen it through the window, huh? <laughs> no, Stretch, I saw it through the window. Oh, then you know what it is I've brang. <laughs> I've brang? Well, that's the past part of sepia of has brung. <laughs> oh, I forgot. What sort of fung did you brung? A <laughs> Let's see it. Uh, it's, it's right in this basket. See? A rabbit. But it's a real one. Is he alive? Oh, of course not. I brought him over from my father's pet shop. He's been preserved. You mean you mounted it? No, I rode him over on my bicycle. <laughs> But, Stretch, what am I supposed to do with a stuffed rabbit? Oh, I thought he'd make a nice centerpiece for your table tomorrow morning. Oh. If I say so myself, this is quite a good example of taxi... Taxi... You never can get one when it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for the rabbit, Stretch. It was very sweet of you to bring it. But before you go, what's that big smudge on your face? Oh, that's from falling off my bike, I guess. I took a shortcut through the meadow. Well, there's a sink in the pantry you can wash in there. Here, take these towels in with you. Towels? Ain't you got no shower curtain? <laughs> we use towels here. It's a new fad. <laughs> and Stretch, if the soap dispenser's empty, you'll find some powder to fill it with in the cupboard. Okay, Miss Brooks. I've got to carry these empty egg boxes out to the incinerator, Stretch. See you later. Ooh, nice little pantry. Well, I guess this thing is the soap dispenser, all right. Let's see now. Where's the powder I'm supposed to fill it with? Oh, it must be in these four little bags. It says, Tin Tomorrow. Well, that's a funny name for a soap powder. Well, I'll just dump them all in the dispenser. Now I'll fill the sink with enough water to wash up with. That ought to do it. Well, the front part of the house is all set, Connie. Everything back here all right? Everything but me, Mrs. Davis. I've got the strangest burning sensation around my chin. Oh, that's where I applied the freckle off. It says on the bottle that if yours is the type of skin that burns easily, you should wash the cream off with soap and water. Now, she tells me. I'll use the sink in the pantry. Well, I'm all finished, Miss Brooks. Here's your towels back. I didn't need them. Didn't need them? 
But you washed, didn't you? Well, what's the sense of wearing a long sleeve shirt if you don't use the sleeves? <laughs> a well-taken point. Now, if you'll excuse me, Stretch, I've got to stop this stinging on my chin some way. I got some smudges out by that incinerator, too. I might as well do a complete wash job. Here goes. Gosh, Miss Brooks, if my face was as pretty as yours, I'd never wash it. Boy, I'll bet you're going to be the swellest lady in the Easter parade. Oh, I don't care about that, Stretch. All I want to do is brighten the little corner where I am. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate's right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's is directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Well, even if Stretch Snodgrass isn't the most brilliant person in the world, Miss Brooks, who has also washed her face in Walter's dye, might easily attain that title. However, since the dye, which is still in the dispenser, requires hours of exposure before it works, Miss Brooks didn't know on Saturday afternoon what a colorful Easter she was facing. Will you answer the doorbell, Connie? I'm just getting out of the tub. All right, Mrs. Davis, I'll get it. Well, Mr. Conklin. Hello, Miss Brooks. To what fortuitous circumstance do we owe the pleasure of this visit from Madison's distinguished principal? This is Saturday, Miss Brooks. You can cut down on the apple polishing. <laughs> <laughs> May I come in? Of course. Now then, as to the purpose of my visit, with your permission, I'll come right to the point. Permission granted. Thank you. As you know, the Easter parade tomorrow will be covered thoroughly by the press photographers. Yes, I know. The photographers will greet us, and we'll find ourselves in the road to Gravure. <laughs> <laughs> Very catchy. In the past, I've always been quite careful about which profile to present to the camera when I'm having my picture taken. But in the parade, one never knows on which side a photographer will pop up. And when they look you over, you will be in clover. <laughs> oh, stop that. The reason I'm here, Miss Brooks, is because of this large, ugly freckle on my right cheek. I've, uh, I've always resented this freckle, Miss Brooks. It's the only blemish on an otherwise perfectly chiseled set of features. <laughs> Oh, you shouldn't be so self-conscious about it, Mr. Conklin. I've never thought of that as a large, ugly freckle. I always thought it was a dimple. A dimple? Well... Yes, indeed. Many's the time I've looked at you and thought, what a large, ugly dimple. <laughs> Such honesty deserves a reward, and I'll see that you get it in the school weeks to follow. Right now, I'd like to inquire about a cosmetic that my wife mentioned. She said Mrs. Davis told her about it. It's called Freckle Off, I believe. Oh, yes, that's it, Mr. Conklin. But sometimes it... Say, that would be just the thing for you. <laughs> well, dear, I finished in the... Oh, hello, Osgood. Hello, Margaret. Mr. Conklin was wondering if he could borrow some of your Freckle Off cream, Mrs. Davis. What for? For his freckle. What freckle? Uh, this large, ugly freckle beneath my right ear. Oh, that. I always thought that was a beauty mark. 
A beauty mark? Well... <laughs> yes, many of the times I've thought to myself, what a large, ugly beauty mark. <laughs> I've got a jar of the cream right here on this table, Osgood. You're welcome to try it. Here, let me dab it on for you, Mr. Conklin. Uh -huh. There we are. Uh, say, this stuff burns. Ouch! It's hot. It's well, hot. you wanted to remove the freckle, don't you? Yes, but I'd like it to leave the face. <laughs> Why? I mean... <laughs> if it burns too badly, you can wash it off with soap and water. Just follow me, Mr. Conklin. Well, hurry up. This is awful. There's a sink right out here in the pantry. I'll fill the basin for you. You'll find soap in the dispenser above the sink. Uh, oh, excuse me, Mr. Conklin. There's somebody at the front door. Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. My car broke down a few blocks from here. I wondered if I could use your phone to call the garage. Of course, Mr. Boynton. Come in. I was driving along, not a care in the world, when suddenly, boom, the transmission, the crankcase, and the drive shaft fell out. <laughs> Anything serious? <laughs> Say, it is. The car won't go at all until they... Uh, I'll be running along now, Miss Brooks. Oh, hello, Boynton. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. What brings you to this part of the town? <laughs> it's a long and harrowing tale, Boynton. But briefly, your friend, Miss Brooks, almost burned half of my face off with some alleged freckle remover. Well, what did you want with freckle remover, Mr. Conklin? Well, I thought it could remove this large, ugly freckle beneath my right ear. You're right. Well, I always thought that was just a mole. A mole? Well, yes, sir. Many's the time I've thought to myself, what a large, ugly... Oh, be quiet. <laughs> Good day to you both. <laughs> oh, Miss Brooks, before I use the phone, I'd like to wash some of the grease off my hands and face. I got pretty dirty tinkering around with the car. Why, I didn't even notice it, Mr. Boynton. But if you'll just follow me, you can use the sink in our pantry. There's plenty of soap in that dispenser between the taps. Just help yourself. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this, this ought to do the trick. Uh, we're going to have our Easter breakfast tomorrow about 10 o'clock, Mr. Boynton. Will that be all right for you? Uh, Easter breakfast? Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks. That's the reason I drove over, to tell you I can't make it tomorrow. Can't make it? Why not? Well, I got a wire from my folks this morning. They're visiting friends at Eagle Springs, and they asked me to join them. It's only 40 miles from here, and I thought I'd drive up in the morning. Of course, that's out of the question now. It'll take days to fix that car of mine. Good. <laughs> But I, I can catch an early train. Now, tell you what, maybe you can borrow Mrs. Davis's car and you could drive me to the station in the morning. What have I done to earn such a bonus? For those of us who arose on time, the Easter Sunday sunrise was an awe-inspiring sight. And in Walter Denton's house, where his pal Stretch Snodgrass has had permission to spend the night, is another awe-inspiring sight. Stretch Snodgrass. Walter. Hey, Walter, are you up? Yeah, I'm up. Let's get dressed and... Ah! <laughs> What's wrong with you? Well, nothing's wrong with me. It's you. Your face looks like an Easter egg. <laughs> Easter egg? What makes you say a thing like that? Because you're all purple. <laughs> Your whole face. Oh, what's so funny? Maybe I got high blood pressure. <laughs> it's more like to use some of that delayed action dye of mine. Dye? Yeah, I've been keeping it a secret. I call it tint tomorrow because the color doesn't show up until the next day. Tint tomorrow? I thought that was soap powder. I filled the dispenser at Mrs. Davis's with it. Yeah, well, I... What? Oh, gosh. I better get over there and warn Mrs. Davis before anybody else uses it. Well, wait a minute. What about me? How do I get this purple stuff off? Oh, quit worrying. I'll invent some way to get rid of it. And even if I don't... Yeah? I can always dye you another color. <laughs> so, you see, Mrs. Davis, Stretch filled the dispenser with the dye, and anybody that washed there is in for a shock today. Gee, I'm glad you didn't get any on you. Me too. And I hope Connie didn't use it. She's going to take Mr. Boynton to the train this morning. She should be coming in for coffee any minute now. Gosh, I hope everything's I all... I just got time for a quick cup of coffee. Oh, hello, Walter. Hello, hello Bill! <laughs> What's the trouble? Uh, nothing, dear. You just startled us when you came in so suddenly. Oh. I'll get myself a cup and saucer out of the sideboard. Look at her, Mrs. Davis. 
Her face is all green. <laughs> I know, but just don't blurt it out at her. We'll break it to her gently. Just keep drinking your milk. Say, it's after eight. I'd better drink this coffee in a hurry. Mr. Boynton's making a 9.15 train. Where's he going? He's going to spend the day at Eagle Springs with his parents. And I don't mind telling you I'm green with envy. <laughs> <laughs> Walter, control yourself. I'll get a dish rag. And... Oh, will you get that, please, Connie? All right. Hello, Miss Brooks speaking. Miss Brooks, this is Mr. Conklin. Oh, happy Easter, Mr. Conklin. I guess you're getting all dolled up Cut for the... Cut the gab. <laughs> Just answer one question, Miss Brooks. What sort of dye was in that witch's brew you smeared on my face? Witch's Witch's brew? Which witch's brew? You know very well which witch's brew brew. <laughs> that freckle-removing junk you put on me. But there's no dye in that. Well, there must have been. You should see my face this morning. You mean it's a different color? Different color? Miss Brooks, I'm plaid. <laughs> Thanks to you and your quack remedies, I look like an Italian sunset. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I didn't have any knowledge of any You guy never have any, any knowledge of anything. Now, hang up. I'm going to call my doctor and get to the bottom of this gook. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, what do you know about that, Walter? <laughs> Mr. Conklin's face has turned all colors of the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks. I must have been thinking of something comical. I better join Mrs. Davis in the dish rag in the kitchen. Mrs. Davis... That was Mr. Conklin on the phone. He just turned plaid. This is terrible, Walter. How are we going to get this dye off the people who washed here yesterday? Well, I stopped at the drugstore on my way over, and Mr. Miller, the pharmacist, said he'd try and figure something out in a hurry. Well, that's at least some hope. Now, maybe it won't be such a shock when you tell Connie her face is green. Uh, me? I think I better go home, Mrs. Davis. What's the matter, Walter? Don't you feel well? I feel like she looks... But I guess the only manly thing to do is face the music. Come on, I'll help you break it to her in a roundabout way. Oh, Connie, about that green face of yours. <laughs> Connie. Connie. Oh, she must have left while we were in the kitchen. Oh, good heavens. What will Mr. Boynton think when he sees her? Who knows? It may be a break for her. He's always been crazy about frogs. <laughs> Coming. Good morning, Mr. Mr. Boynton, what happened to your face? It's blue. Yes, isn't it awful? I noticed it when I went in to shave this morning. When did you notice your face was green? Huh? Well, it's not really a bad shade of green. My face? Oh, here, here. Stand in front of this mirror. No, 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 calm yourself, Miss Brooks I, no, I, I kind of like it Reminds me of my pet frog, McDougal Thanks a million How did I get this on me? Well, Walter Denton phoned me a few minutes ago And explained the whole thing His pal Stretch put some of Walter's delayed dye Into the soap dispenser in your pantry yesterday You mean the tint tomorrow really worked? I'll say it did It won't come off with soap and water or even turpentine I've tried several times. Wait till I get hold of that stretch snodgrass. Well, I'm in a worse spot than you are, Miss Brooks. I've had to cancel my trip to Eagle Springs. Good old stretch snodgrass. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not going away today, how about coming over to my place? Oh, no, oh, no. I wouldn't budge out of this apartment with this blue face, Miss Brooks. No, I'm just going to have to stay in until it fades. I, uh, I guess it's an imposition to ask, but, well, I, I thought maybe I could fix up a little lunch here and play some records to dance to, and, well, if it isn't asking too much, would you care to stay here and keep me company? I'll force myself. <laughs> oh, good. I'll go into the kitchen and see about rustling up some grub. Just make yourself comfortable. Oh, don't worry about green face, blue face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine. I'll get it. Don't slug me, Miss Brooks. Everything's gonna be fine. You're so right, Walter. Goodbye. No, wait. Mr. Boynton told me on the phone about canceling his trip, but now he won't have to. Not so loud. 
What do you mean, Walter? Well, Mr. Miller, the pharmacist, came up with these pills. You just dissolve them in warm water, and it washes the dye off like magic. No, it does, does it? Hand them over, Walter. I'll take them in. Well, okay, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry for what Stretch did. Well, I imagine I'll see you later on. Far be it from me to knock a boy's imagination. <laughs> Goodbye, Walter. I'm just putting on a timely recording, Miss Brooks. You uh, care to dance, Miss Brooks? Mm-hmm. Uh, am I holding you too tight? Uh-uh. <laughs> Do you mind if I hum in your ear? Uh-uh. I'll be all in clover when they look you over. Oh, oh, by the way, who was that at the door just now? The door? Oh, yeah, the bell rang as I went into the kitchen. Who was it? Nobody we know. Happy Easter, Mr. Barnes. <laughs> Eve Arden returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumas' magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap? Better than a liquid, Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen. Soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now once again, here is Eve Arden. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our sponsor, the Colgate Palmolive Peat Company, and all of us here at the studio, may I extend our warmest Easter greetings. Next week, tune into another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis with Lester White and Joe Quillen, with the music of Wilbur Hatch under the direction of Maurice Carlton. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, and Leonard Smith. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size palm olive soap. Yes, ladies, for a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with the warm blush of fragrant loveliness, Enjoy a beauty bath with bath-sized palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had, get big bath-sized palm olive soap. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.